Welcome to Spirit Baby Radio. You are about to join a frequency that will open your mind, expand your heart, and activate your spirit. Thank you for joining Kelly Meehan, Spirit Baby Medium and Master Energy Therapist. Kelly believes in the power of the spirit baby. She speaks with babies in spirit before life, in the womb, and after life. She supports, teaches, and guides others to tune into the intuitive and mystical parts of life for greater wisdom. Join her in meeting your soul baby and build your connection and relationship with deep love and trust. Welcome to Spirit Baby Radio with your host, Spirit Baby Medium, Kelly. Welcome to Episode 138, May 13th, 2022. Ancestral Medicine for Healing the Past into Present Energies with Love Agreements with Spirit Babies. What are ancestors? What does it mean to get support from them? How can you get guidance within conception into birth? And what does Spirit Baby say about it? And of course, today I have a special guest on this very special and exciting topic that I've always been very curious about. Sasha, welcome, welcome. Thank you. And I was telling Sasha, we, of course, you always have like the, we talked a week or two ago, and I, I know Sasha as um, initially as somebody looking for a spirit baby connection many moons ago. Mm-hmm. And um, and I've always, um, Sasha's been on my radar because I knew years ago she was studying ancestral work, and I think I kept harassing her. <laughs> so what's going on? I know you just had a baby and all, but um, what, what, when can we have this conversation? Um, and, okay, we'll come. and then I like harassed her again and we had this amazing conversation a week or two ago and I feel like um, you feel like a soul sister on some level oh, which is really wonderful thanks. to thanks. yeah to connect in that way and so I'm going to read Sasha's um, her bio here and then we're going to go into conversation so Sasha is a ritualist visual artist and practitioner in training with ancestral medicine who has a passion for working with people who are newer to ancestor work and ritual art. Sasha lived abroad for several years in Egypt, Palestine, Russia, working with refugees, migrants, and the independent art spaces. Her ancestors come from what is now the Philippines, China, Germany, and the British Isles. <clears throat> Excuse me. She lives with her husband and two children in Asheville, North Carolina, the traditional homelands of the Eastern Cherok- uh, Cherokee people. Well, thank you. Yeah, that's interesting to know, the Eastern Cher- Cherokee people. We have the Chumash over here. Um, oh, I yes. love all this. Yeah, I love all this. Um, you're so worldly, <laughs> right? Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, and I mean, literally, you're you're because you're, you're 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 made up of so many different um, you know ethnicities too. I don't know if you think it like that, but you are Both you are you're like true. yeah yeah. And um, I always have that that Filipino connection in my own heart because of my children are a quarter Filipino. Yes, so yes. I, 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 I even said to somebody one time, my Filipino family looked at me and they're like, "But you're like a white person," and I'm like, "Yeah, but they're like part of my body. Like my children are my family." Like, of course. No, of course they are. I was like, "They're they're Asian." Like, <laughs> yeah. that's how that works? I'm not stealing it from them. <laughs> I think they're respecting me. Yeah. But um, but I speak that way because that's my family treats me like family. They don't treat me like I'm, you know, separate. As they should. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for being mm-hmm. here. Thank you. And um, I know. Let's like let's jump in. And of course, you know, mm-hmm. I feel like just even with the with you know with the definition of ancestors and and why the work? What called you to the work? That could be a really interesting conversation. Sure. Yeah. That 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 is actually a good story. So what called me to the work, I, I had no background in ancestor work. I had done some ritual arts, but, you know, not really. Like, mostly I was working in, like, I want to say, like, a regular job. But, yeah, just, like, I was just doing my thing, trying to pay off my student loans, <laughs> you know, just like just like many people. But, anyway, I became pregnant with my daughter in 2015, and that really changed my life. I I was so so sick during my first trimester. I mean like very incredibly incredibly nauseous. And the good thing though is that I would go to sleep at night and I started having these really wonderful dreams in my first trimester of me connecting me being with 
women in this kind of collective of women. I did, I didn't know really where I was or um, whatever, but I, I knew that they were Asian. I kind of assumed they were Filipino, but I, I wasn't really sure. And night after night, I just started getting this sense like, oh, wait, these people are my family, but not like my current family. They're like family from a while ago. So I guess that makes some ancestors, huh? And <laughs> And I, as the dreams continued, even into my second trimester where I was feeling thankfully much less nauseous, <laughs> I, um, yeah. I started getting this creeping sense that they wanted to connect with me in my waking life more. So I was like, okay, well, I had no idea how to do this. Or and so I, I, I found myself talking with a friend over tea She's like, well, have you heard of ancestralmedicine.org? And I hadn't. And it turns out that they were just, Daniel, Dr. Daniel Floor was just about to launch his first ever course the next week. Mm-hmm. And wow. I was like, done, signing up. It, 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 it was beautifully uh, synchronous or, you know, like the, the, the synchronicity and the happenstance. And so I've I've been relating with, my people, my ancestors ever since, and specifically my mother's mother's people who are the people from my dreams and, um, you know, probably the ancestors who I relate to the most. They're very similar to me um, in personality, but different and in interest in some ways. But anyway, they are my ride or dies. You know, they are my number one. Uh, I... I actually kind of can't imagine a life where I'm not relating with them like four times every morning <laughs> or, or how, however wow. often it is that, that we're actually relating back and forth. Yeah. It's so nice to be held and loved in that way. And I love that, <laughs> the synchronicity of the story. And I know Ancestral Medicine is the website I recommend to actually to most clients if they're, if, you know, ancestral yes. things come up. Because that was yes. the one that seems the the most. I'm getting like, I know a, a dear friend of mine who's very shaman and t- ancestral, and she recommended that. So I was like, oh, this has got to be good. And then you recommended it when we connect, and I was yeah. like, okay, this is like this is the site I typically will send to people, and because I don't do ancestral work like specifically as a specialty of any sort, but I'm sure um, it comes up in the sessions with some people, definitely. And um, it's yeah. nice to be able to resource people in those directions to find, you know, what that means for them. Because it sounds like, you know, you kind of went into self-discovery, right, with with your with your people. I love that. People. Yeah. Also, Kelly, I would argue that you you do do ancestor work. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <That you must. laughs> I mean, well, because, you know, when, one of the things that we say in the practitioner network with ancestral medicine is that our, our children, our ancestors returning. Mm. And so in that way, you know, like there's, there's this sense of like, you know, different traditions have different ways of talking about it. But like yeah. here right now, we're in like the land of the living, the world of the seen, the realm of mm. the physical, et cetera. And then on the other side of the river or sea or however you want, however your people, Mm -hmm. you know, imagine it, um, is the land of the dead, the realm of the unseen, the realm of, and and, and we're all just, you know, um, one of the things that my teacher, Dr. Daniel Forrest, said that I love and I frequently uh, share is that to die in this world is to be reborn in the world of the ancestors. And to, to, to die in the world of the ancestors is to be born here. And so we're we're just in wow. one amazing cycle. And, I mean, to me, like, your work very much is in that, that mm. cycle. <laughs> yeah. I'll take it. That, the way okay. when you say it like that, that makes sense. <laughs> I think that I'm, I'm probably still schooling myself on what that reality is and even just in my own connection to my own people, right? We're going to yeah, get into that yeah. big, long, long story. Um, Sasha, we talked about that before on the outside. So I was like, oh, there's some, like, yeah. stuff to be done and looked at and connected with, which is very exciting. Yeah. But um, so how would you define really basically ancestor? Like, what, what would how if somebody's like, well, what is an ancestor and, and what does that mean? Like, Yeah, it's such a good question. And people use this word ancestor for a lot of uh yeah. different types of ancestors, I might say. The way that 
I primarily use the word ancestor. It's perhaps the more narrow way, um, which is to say that some people use the word ancestor to describe all of the deceased who mm. they are descended from. So it's like my grandmother, my great grandfather, et cetera, those are ancestors. That's true. And I, when I'm talking about ancestors, um, like the the realms, like the what I was just speaking of, sometimes we clarify clarify it by capitalizing a, like capital A ancestors. We say um, because just dying actually does not make you an ancestor, or at least certainly not a capital A ancestor. Uh, capital A ancestors are. They are wise and loving, healed and vibrant spirits who, yes, you are descended from, who lived on earth and who can assist you with healing in your life, your family's life, your community, the earth. And also importantly is that they are connected to the old medicine and to the old wisdom of your people and those grandmothers and grandfathers down through time. Mm. So when in sessions, when I'm helping people to connect with their ancestral guides, we check for those three things. You know, we, we check for, are you, are you a blood ancestor in this lineage? Are you willing to help with the healing of these people, of, of me and these people, the earth, et cetera? And then are you connected to the old ones before you, the grandmothers and grandmothers down through time? Do you know those ones? Yes, yes, yes. Cool. I love (laughs) that. Yeah. Yeah. Check the boxes. (laughs) Check the boxes, yeah. yeah. And then, actually, it feels important to say that, you know, then the, the fourth question is actually a question for the client themselves, which is what's your... What's your gut sense about this one? Is this the one that you want to be connecting with? Is this your ancestral guide? Because there really needs to be consent on both sides. And um, I I don't think we mentioned this, Kelly, but uh, I I don't think we talked about this previously, I mean, but one of the things that I love about this modality is that, um, you know, I'm I'm not – I'm not a medium per se, although, you know, medium can mean a bunch of different things. But I I help people to come into direct relationship, to have a direct experience with their people. So so as so as they're feeling the presence of that guy, basically I'm I'm like the space keeper, like I'm like, okay, ask them this question and this question. And then what's your gut sense, Kelly? Do you feel good about this one? Is this the one for you? And then if it's if it's a maybe, we go for the yes or we go for the no. You know, like we 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 really go for our own consent and our own power around it. So, I, I really love that because it, it there's that sense of empowerment in the connection. It's not just coming outside of you. Like, well, what do you think or what do you say? It's exactly. like, yeah, like how do I feel and can I sit with it and and how do I receive it really? Um, especially if it's yes. so new. And yeah. and how can it be of support even in conception or even in pregnancy? I know there's so many women that really tune in to my work that are just struggling to conceive. And they're probably wondering, going, wow, going five, ten, or multiple multiple birth losses, wondering, like, well, where are you, ancestors? Like, what's happening? Like, oh. do I keep going through this? Yeah. It's really hard. Yeah. Someone just even shared in one of the groups about having 10 miscarriages and then a silver. And then what are they supposed to think, right? They're just thinking, what the fuck is, where are my ancestors? Who who am I? What am I doing wrong? And that pain. And, of course, there's so much to that story, I'm sure. There's not a one, okay, this is it, right? But it's like, what do we do with that? I want to kind of jump into actually birth loss because I'm thinking of other women I've connected with who've had multiple losses and just are like, you know, looking at that, their past, looking at like their mother's mother. And some of them did struggle actually to conceive, maybe not all, but the majority that I've been connecting with, they noticed that, oh, this is interesting. My mother had a silver. My mother had multiple miscarriage and and is is there a connection? And sometimes we may not fully know, right? 
And other times it's like what what kind of healing could come from the knowledge maybe even, right, without it being so definitive, like it has to be this one thing and then therefore we all, come, you know, heal from that one place. But maybe there's just so many parts to it, I suppose. What would you say about that? Yeah, I would – well, first I would say – big empathy and tenderness to the people who are experiencing Mm -hmm. this. Yeah, big softness and empathy for them. And my instinct is to bring it directly to their ancestors, which is like to drop Mm -hmm. in with them and just go for the, go for the question. Why, why is this happening to me? Am I meant to have children? Am I not meant to have children? What, what can you, like, what can I glean from this? I, I, I think my, my hesitation, Kelly, in giving an answer is that the ancestors, but specifically their ancestral guides would be the best people mm. to fix mm-hmm. on what medicine is needed. Like, if, for example, this person or a person is meant to have a child and perhaps there is some intergenerational harm that is, that they're mm-hmm. downstream from some unmetabolized grief, which is so often the case with the living um, because mm-hmm. we live in a culture that doesn't um, honor the dead and that doesn't mm-hmm. acknowledge that the dead are on their own journey and they have needs. Um, mm-hmm. So it could, for example, be that a lineage is looking for attention and offerings mm-hmm. and your, you know, um, energy, <laughs> you know, like they're, they're like, hello, I'm trying to connect, you know, again, it, it's mm. sort of a roundabout way to go about doing that. Or it could be something else, but either way, my instinct is to bring it directly to the guides mm-hmm. because the other nice thing about mm-hmm. ancestors is that they are of blood and bone. So what's helpful yeah with this particular case, it's like, you know, I, like my daughter and I, for example, frequently call on several different deities and helping spirits. Um, And what's specifically nice for blood and bone problems is that our ancestors are of our blood and bones and are our best resource for, hey, what's happening? You know, help me to understand. And one of the things that, can often come up when somebody is working through the healing of a lineage because that's, you know, people talk about ancestral healing, right? That's, that's, that is, well, in a nutshell, ancestral healing is working with all of the dead, all of the ones who are deceased on that lineage until they are mm-hmm. all well seated ancestors. Mm. So sometimes in that process of all of, the dead going through that rite of passage of becoming a capital A ancestor, things like this will come up. Things like, oh, is that why my kidney's failing? Oh, is this why such and such is happening? And, you know, again, I don't want to create so much causation like I healed because X, Y, Z, and it does happen. (laughs) So there's a way in which I think doing the work and then bringing bringing it to the ancestors directly and you are, you know, uh, in in this case, the person having a direct experience of their ancestors Mm -hmm. is what comes to mind for me. Yeah, no, I think that's really helpful for people to like tune into. It's kind of like, of course, there's not a one size, you know, fits all approach to the journey and taking people into that trusted space with their guides who are probably just like, oh, it's about time. (laughs) We've been like talking to you and let's bring us into the more present knowledge of it. Um, And I'm sure people are in communication unconsciously even at times, right? But it's nice to bring a conscious awareness. Um, Makes me think about family constellation. You know that, right? With that Uh kind of... Uh-huh, I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was in... Uh, studying death midwifery and this woman was just fabulous she just like literally just 30 plus years doing this constantly she like glowed in the room you know it's like it was all her energy was about it she didn't have to say much by the way it was just there and um she had these two people up and i don't even know i mean i kind of know about it but i don't even really know what was happening i was just tuning into the emotion of this 
these two people that represented the mother and father of this person, and it was just so emotional. You're, like, crying, and you don't even know why. <laughs> you know, it was like a healing. And I like that yeah. because then you're not overthinking, like, what's happening? And I remember we, we did a very tiny little meditation, and we were asked to really to go through our ancestors, like to go through and see. And I remember going, oh, I kept going and going and going. And then I think it was like sixth or seventh generation. And I was like, I was yeah. shocked. I was mm-hmm. sitting there. And then I see this wild woman just peek her way out. And she was like, hey. And she was kind of wild and quote unquote crazy to that time. Uh-huh. And it was on my dad's side. And I, and I just went, oh. And she's like, you know, we're all psychic, and we've been psychic through generations. But me, they they tried to put me in the institute, and they thought I was crazy. And I was like, yeah, I could see them doing that. <laughs> I was like, totally like, like. But she was like, but you know, it is who she is, and and she was who she was, and she celebrated that, even though maybe it wasn't acceptable in that six generations ago. But it made me feel really kind. Look at it; it impacted me. It stayed with me, because I never thought it could go that far. I don't know. I have limitations in my mind. I never really oh, thought yes. about it, you know? Yes, 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 yes. No, yeah. Um, like me, for example, like the ancestral yeah. guides that I'm in connection with every day, um, I, let me do a quick check. Th- three of the four of them all lived a thou- over a 1,000 years ago. One oh, wow. One took 2,000 okay. years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, That's I helpful. Mean, yeah, so six, six generations, I'm like, oh, but like a – a recent one. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, because I thought, whoa, can I go back that far? And the, the woman was, like, having us go, like, into this line, and then I'm just keep going, and I'm like, oh, is this, yep. am I doing this right? <laughs> is this normal? Or, you know, me and my supernatural world, i just accepting it and, like, letting it move through. <clears throat> but I feel like there's still, there's still stuff for me to learn um, because I want to – I want to move more. I do feel like, like, I like how you said the blood and bones of the ancestors. It just feels, you know, like there's a cellular connection somewhere, you know, there's something else happening. And and as we know, I mean, there's so many multidimensional realities, right? And it's like, of course, we all want to connect to the right one. (laughs) Or at least I would feel like, yeah, it's, it's, I think there's a sense of safety when we're connecting with ancestors on some level. Um, there is. It's just, mm-hmm. a, yeah, it's just a closer, very earth realm, and maybe the, their earth realm experience has been a part of their journey as well. So they're kind of like, oh, yeah, I've been to that place. <laughs> yes. Well, some of these That's other exactly things, they're right. like, yeah, they don't, they haven't been to this place. So they're just kind of like, hey, just move on. You're good. And you're like, no, this place is freaking hard. <laughs> like, you, <laughs> you haven't been here. What do you know? <laughs> it's so easy for yeah. you to say that. <laughs> yes, I do love all, star also people, that, but it's different. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I I completely hear you. And yeah, I I know you and I've talked about this so like and it's also not to say that some of our ancestors also aren't descended from star yeah. people, you know. Um but you're absolutely right in the safety aspect mm. as long as the ones that we're connecting with are wise and well and they're not just mm. any old person who um is in our lineage. But but the I to me, I think the reason why that is is because, you know, a, another common thing we say in ancestral medicine is like, uh, your body, your your blood, your bones, your your body is the altar of your ancestors, right? Mm. Because their blood, their bones, their hab- they are they are really literally in you. I mean, really literally in you. Um, wow. And it's true that like a soul's lineage can be. So many other things, like me, for example, I have a soul lineage that is outside of my blood lineage. It also doesn't change the fact that I am in this body at this time. My children carry the blood of me and my husband. You know, I mean, there's Mm -hmm. there's honor and respect and acknowledgement that's needed regardless of um, other uh, lineages or traditions that you are um, initiated in, you know. Because yeah, your blood and your bones and your body, I mean, I, I don't I don't want to say it belongs to your ancestors, but it's like they're they're inseparable mm. from that that is your body as well. So it's yeah. <laughs> Heavy yeah, metal. A bit. Kind of, yeah, I'm like kind of sitting with that <laughs> thinking about my children because they come from two people who have very yeah. different 
realities, like my husband being, you know, from Asian or, you know, descent over there. So it's like, what is in that, you know, that part of the blood and bones? And then mine is very European, and, and then he is European too, but it's like, what is that? Like, what is the deeper? And then, you know, the children. And then I like what you said, Ethan, this is someone's connecting with their baby beings and how they have that ancestral connection and how you can really facilitate that. I think it'd be really healing for people, actually. I don't think people maybe think enough about that. Like, oh, yeah, like, what would it be like? And it feels it feels really loving and pure for people, like, to go, oh, can my family, and not to say it's not without trauma. We know there's, like, a lot yeah. of ancestral trauma. And yeah. But I, I think I was, you know, going through a week or two ago a session of my own and looking at, a theme in my lineage and why it's creating so many issues in my current and I'm just going wait where's the good because <laughs> it feels a bit negative right now <laughs> and I'm going and that's where I'm like I'm gonna hire Sasha to help me with the good magic okay. stuff because I, I need to that good to come in to go because it's so easy right you hear people go oh the ancestors the trauma right and then it's like then you feel blocked by that trauma on some level but yeah. what can you even say yeah. about what the healing of the trauma, like I know that's such a big, big thing to like say because it's so mm-hmm. so many layers to it. But you know, do, yeah, can you just speak about that? Because do a lot of people do come and say, "My gosh, we have murderers, and you know, or we were suppressed, what? or yeah. you know, what whatever else comes up is like, how do we then? How are we? I'm sure, having a human body now and being in that is changing it, right? I mean, <laughs> just that alone. Yeah. Mhm. Okay. Very good question. I, I I think my like of my four primary lineages, which is mother's mother, mother's father, father's father, father's mother. Three mm. of my four grandparents experienced big T trauma. Mm. Both of my parents have experienced big T trauma. I myself have. We we currently live in a time of deep cultural wounding. Deep. It's probably not a surprise to you or me, to you know, to yeah. people who are listening to this. But it's true. It's true that systemic oppression and also mm-hmm. just the lack of connection with spirit, divine, however yeah. you experience them, is generally not respected, acknowledged, um, or even um, uh, like held in, in the sacred way that it's meant to be held. You know, so. Mm-hmm. So yes, respect to all of this, and and in my experience, even working with, um, you know, I'm I'm thinking about one of my clients right now who has, who is a descendant of some really big, um, yeah, big trauma here in the Americas. You know, I mean, of, of course, you know, like the, the enslavement of of African Americans, the genocide of Native Americans. I mean. There, there is, there is really a lot of ancestral trauma, or however you want to call that, to work through. And in my experience, connecting with the wise and well ancestors, the ancestral guides, can blow the top off of it. Like, let, let me, let me give you a like a really quick example. Is that okay, Kelly? Because yeah, I'm like. Yeah. I, I, I want to drive it home with an illustration. My grandmother, um, my grandmother was born in the Philippines, and she she lived in the Philippines during World War One. She was raped by a Japanese soldier when she was 12 years old. That same day, her father was murdered um, oh. by the soldiers, yeah. and. She never, in her life while she was living, she never had the support physically mm-hmm. or emotionally, spiritually, that she actually needed to heal from that massive, massive traumatic yeah. event. And this is my mother's mother's people. So if you remember, like, that, those were the ones who were coming to me in the dream. And so when I connected with my ancestral guide on my mother's mother's side, and we worked our way all the way through to the most recent dead, which was my grandmother and her mother. And uh, when it came time, 
you know, I, I, I was like fully in ritual space with them. Right. And I asked my guide, like, what needs to be done? Like, what can I do here earth side to support the work of healing my mm-hmm. grandmother and her mother? They brought me to the farm where all of this happened, where my grandmother was abused, where my great grandfather was murdered. And <clears throat> my ancestral guide was like, just pray, sit here. We want offerings of flowers and pray. And in that moment, a massive um, flood, tsunami, typhoon, I, I'm not even sure like scientifically what the right word is, but water came flooding the farm, flooding everything that I could see, um, bursting through windows and doors and um, the, the little crevice where my grandmother was abused and the place where my grand my great grandfather was shot and there was just water everywhere. It was a flood. And as the water is rising, I heard a voice of somebody who I had never met before. And she was saying to me, like, <clears throat> I have come. Your people are healed. I have come. And it was the most incredible. After a while, you know, again, like time and ritual space is sort of nonlinear, so I'm not really sure how long we were there. But eventually mm-hmm. the water settled, and I was with back with my ancestral guide. And she was like, well, that was the goddess of the sea. Mm-hmm. And, and I was like, okay. And she was like, yep, we call her in for the big stuff. And I was like, Got it. Okay. Cleansing okay. water. We call we call her in for the big stuff. And so when I have big things that are going in my life, I mean, guess who I call on? I call on the goddess of the sea. You know, her name her name is Maguayan, I learned later, even though I wasn't raised with any kind of framework around. But anyway, the important thing mm-hmm. that I wanted to illustrate is that the the ancestral guides, the ones who lived well and died well, who are connected to the old medicine of your people they know who to go for for healing. Mm. It's not me who was like, oh, yeah, I heard that this goddess of the sea is really awesome. Maybe we can call mm. her. No, no, no. I've never even heard of her. It was the guide who knew. No. When, when, when we're working with, with trauma and, and, and this level of hurt, we got to go for the big guns, and we're going to call in Maguayan. And I was like, okay, got it. I will just sit here and observe. You know, so... Anyway, there's a way in which the other helpful thing about the ancestral guides is that they will tell you who needs to be called in because they're the ones who are connected with the old medicine of your people and have resources like, oh, is it this deity? Is it this spirit? Is it this tree, the spirit of the land, et cetera? You know, because they, they themselves know, not, not us. Yeah, you're making me think that something that came up in a session recently with the healer I worked with, somebody different and new, an old student of mine, um, uh-huh. who um, who does you know psychic and medical intuitive work. And I thought, you know, let's see what she let's see where she's going to go. And we went to lineage stuff. And one of the things that came up, and it was that it was so clear. But I this is where I didn't I didn't fill in the other part of it. Is like now what do I do with it, right? Um, we did a little mm-hmm. bit of you know kind of grounding the body work like into the center but what really came up was my mom's people and how they mm-hmm. like how they like not like suffering but they looked at me like this is what we do what do you mean you don't want to suffer with us anymore and I'm kind of like um actually I don't um yeah. how do we you know, I haven't figured I haven't got to that point of like what the next step is in that but it was really big because even just hearing that and I could just remember my mom and her sisters and going down that line and there's so much more to it but I'm like but it's almost like suffering is normal right and it's like but it's really I don't want to do it anymore and there was like I got what was picked up was a sense of grief in me Mm -hmm. first of all because I'm like I have to it almost is like I have to leave my family on some level because I don't want to play in that energy anymore or whatever it is that I feel victimized by kind of I feel like it's taken me over Mm -hmm. And how does the lineage really stop? It stops with me, but I also think about my children. Mm-hmm. Will they will they get into that place that I'm in now, or do they have to be female? I don't even know because I don't have any girls. 
And I always wondered yes, about no. that too. You know, they they most definitely don't have to be female. Um, and yeah. I just want to acknowledge what you're saying: the suffering is normal, the sense of grief around that. Yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes. Like back back to like we live in a we live in a time of deep cultural wounding. Yes, yeah. and that in the methodology that I'm trained in. We actually don't even talk to the dead who are unwell for this reason. Mm, unwell. Because we're like, That's really, yeah. Anything you're putting down, because they're I in don't it. Give. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, totally. They're in it. Yeah. I'm gonna go straight to the guy. Change and I'm their gonna mind. You... Yes. <laughs> exactly. And I mean, also, you know, when a person is in that circular life, they're not gonna be ch- like you, you. You think a person lives like until so many years on Earth, and then suddenly they die, and something radical changes? Not necessarily. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, actually, no. So, anyway, it's to say that in the in the healing methodology that I'm trained in, we go straight to the guide, and then anyone mm-hmm. in between the guide and me, they go in a healing container and they get the medicine Ooh. they need. And then I, we make offerings, we make prayers, et cetera, but we're not relating with the dead ones, with, with, sorry, with the deceased ones who are, who are not well, because it doesn't serve us. Like, which is mm. sort of the, you know, it, yeah. it, it doesn't serve me to, to be in that energy. And also I completely relate to what you're saying. I mean, some, sometimes I, I have said, I think I'm a sort of unlikely person to get into ancestor work. Because I found my family of origin so toxic that if somebody mm. were like, "Oh, you want to you want to talk to your deceased family?" I'd be like, "Hell no! I don't want to talk to any of yeah. them." <laughs> right? I don't. <laughs> but but my guides and the ones before them who carry the old medicine are yeah. awesome. So they're so they're yeah, so I get it. Which I'm like, you know, and then and then also when it, when I met my guides, I, I was like, oh gosh, okay, so I'm not just the, this like bizarro orphan alien kid. Like I uh. like <laughs> like, <laughs> like there there is actually goodness and vibrancy and wholeness mm. beyond. Yeah. Like you know, and again, sometimes we need to go a thousand years, fifteen hundred years. Uh, you know, I don't know, but that. Like that is on a person to person basis, but the point is, is that there's good medicine, there's good earth medicine there, there's good people medicine, but many of us can't find it amongst our living family or the recently deceased. Gosh, I really love everything the way you the way you kind of capture it and how you move into that specific frequency because it always feels like you hear the word trauma, you hear ancestor, and you're just like, oh, I'm just screwed. Oh. <laughs> Because there's so many, like, parts to that. Like, you talk about in America, slavery and things like that, and yeah. just murders and darkness and rape and women. And then it's like, but but it's like you, what you're making me realize, too, is that, and something I've realized for many years, but it comes back at times, is, like, we can either really sit in the shadow and, like, just be in that dark place, like, and just never, like, move from it, which is frightening even to say. And I know people yeah. do that, especially women you know, dealing with birth loss, multiple birth loss, or trying to understand the dark edges of their experience, um, but yeah. also being as present as they can to see what that, what what is, I'm all about the present energy and the future, because, yeah. you know, I feel like we can so live in our past, right? I mean, I have, I, I, I'm a, uh-huh. I've been indoctrinated to that in many ways but then there's the realization like what are you going to go try to do and restructure and fix but i like the idea and how i perceive it is i'm going to these these ancestors to me that are just clean and light and connected in a way for your best even though there could be dark shadows in between of going wait a second maybe Uh they still need healing and it's not your job to heal them it's like let the other in between generations to come help them because that's what it feels like to me it's like wow, like they're, oh, yeah, we're all about suffering. Come and join the suffering club, Kelly. And it's like, I, I want the papers to revoke my membership. <laughs> like, where do I find? <laughs> Where's the revoking? Get a stamp out. But it's like, wow, you can either feed inside that and, like, like somehow I need to change it or I get to go on the outside and go, who am I now in this body? And, yes, there's shame and there's big energies around the past around the feminine, but then I go, well, look at the work that you do, right? And then I'm like, okay, what is this, like, without, like, oh, I have to go do this. It's like, what am I living in the pureness 
of my heart and soul to go, okay, what is that next? It's not, of course, not without fear and, and heaviness, but it's like, again, I feel like, I do feel like we have options, right? It's like mm-hmm. the question, and to, even even if we have questions that we may not have any answers, and that's like fine. What, what else, you know? At least we have the questions, yeah. right? Because I'm going, oh, yeah. suffering, okay, I get you, but I'm like, I'm not trying to change you in that. I'm just trying to go, I don't want to do it, and I need to know what what deep energy in my own reality is going to soften into that specific tone and vibration doesn't have to be keeping me in suffering. Yes, and we do want to change that about them to be direct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, or, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, you know, may may all of them, may all of the deceased ones on all of our lineages, may yeah. they receive the and the medicine that they need, but truly yeah. the, the the better in spirit that all each of our blood ancestors is the better truly we are. So I actually do okay. care that your mother's people do get the healing that they need because it okay. because the better they are, the better you will be. And I, I mm. this might be like a next topic, Kelly, but yeah. kind of what, what we talked about, about the unwell dead, how the unwell dead mm. kind of eat the living. Mm-hmm. Hungry and ghosts, so, you call them? Hungry ghosts, yes. So may there be thinking no about that. <laughs> yes. May there be no hungry ghosts. May they be well fed and well seated with their uh, people, and may they uh-huh. just be a source of nourishment for you. And so they, mm-hmm. so in order to do that, they need to get the healing that they need. Yeah, I like how you you put it in such an easy place. <laughs> well, it feels so easy. Like I'm in my other reality going. Wait, there's like 50 of you, and you're being difficult right now. So where's my authoritative energy? Yeah, to totally, go? totally. I'm not yeah, doing it's... this. But even yeah. even the other day, I ha- literally two nights ago, I'm laying there in bed, and I go, I know I'll be an ancestor someday. And I I, yeah. I didn't grow up in a family where where they're like, oh, I'm like 20th generation herbalist, holistic media, whatever. Actually, probably psychic mm-hmm. medium. There definitely is a lot of lineage in that, but I don't have a lot of information on that. I'm just a little bit. Mm-hmm. But um, but I'm also going. I'm teaching my children about natural medicine and healing. And I go, what mm-hmm. if it begins with me, and then years to come, I'm the ancestor that then gets to pass it on. I literally had this realization two yeah. days ago, and it made me so happy. Really, oh. so I feel like I'm. Was I waiting for somebody? And I go, maybe it's me, because I'm changing lineage of birth. I'm changing lineage of natural medicine in my family of origin, and I'm keeping it strong. Mm-hmm. My son the other day ended up. I had to bring him to acupuncture with me, and he took my needles out. Five years old, my little acupuncturist. <laughs> he loved doing it. The doctor was like, "Oh, can you take him out?" I'm like, "Absolutely." You know, and he was just so curious about it. What are these needle things in her back and her legs and her face when I turned over? But it was like, and that made me go, wow, look, like he gets to learn about healing in this natural way, which is like, I mean, it's incredible, it's really, to me. It's yeah. such a gift. It is a gift. <laughs> Big gift. Agree. Agree. You know, something else that you um, that you said, um, kind of, I wanted to circle back to. You mentioned yeah. the 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 grief space and like for people who are experiencing, um, you know, sort of the the rougher edges of this experience. And you know, something that occurred to me mm-hmm. was that when we are grieving, mm-hmm. that we are really all day long in ritual space. Mm-hmm. And that is, it is also an awesome time to get really clear communication with the ancestors. So just, mm. just putting that out there, because I mean, even, even being uh, pregnant, especially the, the, or, or like in a, in the fourth trimester, having a young kid, or maybe even just always being a mother, mm-hmm. I feel like you can crack into ritual space very easily, mm-hmm. you know, where you're like, got it. The, the ancestral guides here, I'm getting the messages. And that really also is a gift um, because not all people, you know, to to really drop into that level of ritual space, I mean, you you know this, Kelly, mm-hmm. because of the work that you do. But 
But sometimes people yeah. have a hard time when they're too much in their thinking brain. Yes. Yeah. And when we are in an active state of grief or big feeling states, that ritual space is like, boom, we're here. You know, so anyway, mm-hmm. it, it, it was just occurring to me that that, that that in particular might be an awesome time to call on the support of the wise and well ancestors to hold you and then also to answer questions that you have about who you're meant to be and what it is you're doing. So do you feel, we're coming close to the end here, but like maybe a tip or two. So if somebody's like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to really pick the fertile conception people more than anything right now, because that's a lot of the needs of like, going year after year, is so much intervention, I don't know what I'm doing, and how, how, what would be the best steps for them to go, okay, I'm going to sit in this quiet ritualistic space and call in my ancestors, like, and then see what happens. I don't know if that was confusing. <laughs> it's wait, always so, so much so, more so than that. <laughs> so wait, so help me, help me illustrate. So I'm, yeah. I'm a person who's wanting to conceive, and then... Let's say you've been struggling for year after year. Like, they're, if, they're, if they're like, you yeah. know, I'm ready to sit with the ancestors, what, what what could be very, like, just a basic kind of step into it? If it's like, oh, I don't even know what that means or what that's about. And maybe mm-hmm. we've answered mm-hmm. that a little bit here and there, but just a little, yeah, yeah sum it up. Yeah. So, so I would say, <clears throat> well, we're talking a little bit about, like, a process and creating sacred space and dropping in, and mm-hmm. but, but that's okay. Um I would invite the person to firstly do whatever, uh, do a thing that brings them close to source. So whether mm. that's like dancing, singing, writing, uh, you know, just something that really helps them to feel alive in their body. And then what I would invite them to do is to sit or lay down. And there's a three-step process that I that that we use in the ancestral medicine practitioner community, which is just to to Invite a power you already know and trust. Ask them to clear the ener- your energetic space, psychic and physical, of any unwanted energy. Mm-hmm. And then upon that, having a circle of protection. Having that trusted power create a circle of protection around you so that nothing mm-hmm. that is not healed, helpful, or vibrant is Everything that's in the circle, your circle of protection is healed, healthy, and vibrant. Everything else is outside of the circle. Mm. And then from that space, from that grounded, clear, protected space, I would specifically ask for the trusted power to introduce me to a wise and well ancestor on either this lineage or just in general who might have a teaching for me. That's mm. that is sort of an abridged version of what we would yeah there, there you know like typically in a session we would actually go through the four questions we talked about earlier and then and then I yeah. you know, a, a practitioner could guide you through that experience but in general that's the gist and 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 one thing that feels really important to say is that when you are dropped in even if you know even if you want to drop in however you want to drop in I I just like clearing and the circle of protection but when you are dropped in mm-hmm. it's really important to just not call on ancestors, like, hey, ancestors, because then those troubled dead are like, oh, mm-hmm. did, did you call me? Did you call me? No, we, we want to call specifically to the well and wise ancestors. Wow, yeah, the well and wise, I like that. Yeah, who are connected to the old ones and the old medicine. This is what's going on with me. What what message do you have? And, and yeah, it just, just feels really important to say because we, you know, Especially in that space, you don't you don't need any more ghosts hanging out around you. <laughs> mm. You don't you don't need. I any like that. Space. That's a really really good point. This is really helpful. I feel like a lot of people will go, oh okay, let me sit with my ancestors, calling and I I know what you mean and really having a clear space because as we talked about earlier, there's a lot of stuff happening in multidimensional reality. Just oh, because people yes. may not fully see or. Some people may feel insensitive, but I've seen a lot of stuff, as you have too, and it's like, whoa, it gets a little crowded. 
It does. <laughs> it's crowded. Yes, it does. Yeah, and then and all of a sudden people are like, I'm so depressed and anxious, and I'm like, yeah, probably because you got like a million energies around you. Of course. It's not that. Yes, it's not. Totally. It's not like well, I it didn't meet. I didn't get that vitamin D today. I'm not down talking vitamin D, but I'm like, what if you're just literally crowded with energy all the time? How do you even mm-hmm. find yourself? Oh it's my important. gosh, of course. Right. I know what. Like, what if an energy is on you so long that it, like, becomes part of your right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, yes. Yes, yes, yes. My, our, our daughter, who's, who just turned four last week, she oh. is, <laughs> bless her, she's like a little ritualist in training. She knows how to nice. call and trust and clear her space and create a circle of protection. Mm-hmm. Like, it's really important. And we, we do it every day, every, every morning and every nice. night. We yeah, we, we do this ritual. Because yeah, I'm like, especially for the little ones who are so cracked open. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, yeah, and may everything that's around her only healed well and vibrant energy. Thank you, spirits. Mm. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. It is good. Because then you're like, you're getting the energy of her own spirit and her, her electromagnetic field becomes accustomed to being clear, really. Yes. Yes. And also she knows that... You know, it, it 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 strikes me that when I when I have led sessions for people who are new to ritual work, which I actually love to do that because sometimes people are like, oh, I don't think I'll be able to connect. Oh, I don't really have a sense for. It. Mm. I'm like, mm, okay, let's try, um, <laughs> because right? every can it's a it's an it's an extraordinarily human thing to be able to do this. Like I'm not special at all. I love that. Um, and I, I, I don't consider myself particularly, like, witchy or anything. Um, but um, one of the things that I've, I've been loving is just that when they, when they do, I would say three or four sessions and they're still newer, mm-hmm. they're like, oh, wait a second, this is what it is to be clear. Oh, I know what that feels like. Oh, this is what it is to be protected. I know it. Like, yes, 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 mm-hmm. life skills. You know, I mean, because yeah. Jesus this. Like that. Life skills. <laughs> you know? Life skills. How to clear your space, how to how to how to create a layer of protection, how to draw on support. It's like it seems so basic, but it's so life changing. It's so life changing. Again, it's the energetic hygiene, which is like so many it empaths hurts. that come. I so much so many empaths. It's like my gosh, like there's so many and it's like but if you're walking around schlepping everybody and just feeling crappy all the time it's it's again it's not that vitamin d always (laughs) you know it's like (laughs) i know people people often ask me oh you know because i because sometimes i do several sessions in a day because they're like oh are you exhausted at the end of the day i'm like nope Mm. you know why (laughs) Because not only do I have that good, you know, not only do I do ritual before and after sessions, but also because I'm just working with the wise and well ones. I'm not working with mm-hmm. with with hungry ghosts, you know. Yeah. All in, in in any way, like I candidly, I don't even think humans have the capacity, like us here, have the capacity to really like heal another in that way. What what the hungry ghosts need is the medicine from the ancient ones that is of them. Yes. You know? Yeah, and so in that's that really way, it's like, it's like me as a practitioner, I'm not worried. Oh, can I heal this lineage? Can I? No, 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 no. I am a circle keeper. Your ancestral guides know the medicine that mm. is needed for your people. And my job is just to make sure that we check the boxes to guide you when you're in the space and to send you notes. Well, when you say that, I like the circle keeper because your frequency is tuned into the higher healing of your own ancestors. So your presence to bring mm. them forward to me, that's how I see it. Because even in the spirit baby work, yes. you know, I don't, mm-hmm. I'm not like, I can't make people get pregnant. You know, I can't, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I can yeah. help people find the tone of frequency to that timeline, to their presence. Mm-hmm. And I've seen it. I mean, even just recently, all these women are pregnant now and they were kind of shocked. But, um, yeah, they were kind of shocked in the sense because I was like, you know, I started amplifying my own frequency going, okay, people are going to come to me. The babies are coming. I don't, but we're not, we're not playing around here. Um, let's just, let's just do this and like, let's see what it's going to take for them to get into that space. And of course there's a lot of fear. 
Um, but there's mm-hmm. also like joy and love and like going, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. like can you, or, and then um, they're pregnant going, can I do it? Right. It's like, there's always going to mm-hmm. be parts, right. Mm-hmm. Pieces to that. But it's like, no, you are, you're doing it right now. And so let's, you know, let's visit that and be, you know, and I always feel like for me, really what I've been pushing is spirit baby is, is instinctual kind of, that's what it feels like you were, your energy's about. It's like, this is instinctual. This doesn't have to be this yeah. big challenge or, or disconnect. But I mean, look at, I mean, especially in America, there's so much disconnect from our, from our lineage. I mean, just even from cultural traditions, it's like, you know, it's very tricky here. You know, there's not a lot of ceremony and ritual, right? It's like things, something happened in the 80s, maybe, <laughs> or probably all in the 50s. The- but <laughs> but 80s was all about materialism. But, um, <clears throat> no, I love that. Yeah, I love everything that you're sharing. It sounds so, it's just so healing and so present. And um, I want to, I want, we're coming up to the end. I want you to share just ways that people can connect with you. Um, how do they get a hold sure. of you? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I have a YouTube channel, <laughs> which which I, I think, Kelly, you have the link to, but it's under the name Sasha Heron. And then my website is SashaHeron.com, and my Instagram handle is also Sasha Heron. And, um, yeah, so I'm available for ancestral healing sessions, which is, which is what we talked about, the lineage healing, but it's also just – utilizing and utilizing <laughs> it sounds so uh, technical but just come uh, relating helping you to relate to your ancestors and part of that mm-hmm. is is lineage healing and part of that is just like please give me guidance for my life um you know and having like a having an elder uh, like a like a a circle of elders around you like those are also ancestors and mm-hmm. that's also the work that i do and then Finally, the last thing I'll say is that just recently I've started offering consultations for parents whose whose children are seeing or hearing spirits and then Mm. to help them and the child actually work through, work through that experience because it is, it's, it's tricky and it can be a big blessing and may all of the parents who are experiencing be well resourced. And so anyway, that's, that's like a newer offering. Yeah. That sounds awesome, Sasha. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Thank you, Kelly. And I want to thank you all for joining. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no. It was a pleasure. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. So great. Yeah. I want to thank everybody for joining episode 138, May 13th, 2022, Ancestral Medicine for Healing the Past into Present Energies with Love Agreements with Spirit Baby. And of course, to learn more, you can visit my website about one-on-one sessions. I have Sacred Communication Journal, Spirit Baby Oracle Cards just about ready to come back out, as well as other healing programs and workshops. Thank you again for joining. This is Spirit Baby Radio. Thank you for joining Kelly in the energy of awareness, love, healing, and soul communication. Please join the next episode at www.soulbabycommunication.com.